Ketter at Coach.com. Soft white cataract with posterior capsule rupture. A traumatic cataract with a soft fluffy lens material is tricky. So you can see there's some iris adhesions to the lens capsule. Those can be gently separated. Capsule has been stained with tripen blue dye. You can see it's an unusual looking cataract here. This traumatic cataract has a lot of opacity on the cortical material, but not a lot of nuclear density. So there's that sneaky that's fixed. Now, getting the rex is done, watch carefully. Make sure there are no signs of zonal or weakness here as you create the rex. So that looks pretty good. Now, this patient sustained some sort of injury to the eye. Not exactly sure what. And you can see here's the rexus being completed. That looks pretty good. Nice, complete rexus. And when that rexus goes around, you can see there's not a lot of lens milk coming out. So there's not a lot of liquefied lens cortex, but it certainly has been opacified here. Now, in a case like this, you definitely want to make sure you get a good rexus completed. Going in with the phaco probe, you'll see, don't go with high power, because the problem is high power will go right through that soft nucleus. That thing is butter. You could probably just aspirate this thing out. So now with that hole there in the middle, there's a bright red reflex. So with a real soft nucleus like this, you don't want to use phaco power. You want to use just vacuum. In fact, you could often remove these lenses with just the vacuum using a phaco probe, and sometimes even just the IA probe. So you can see going in here, trying to emulsify some of this lens material now. Now there wasn't any hydrodissection performed, and so now this lens can be brought up out of the bag, little pieces. Now keep in mind, you do have a break there in the central posterior capsule, so you may want to actually, through your side port, inject some viscoelastic down there. If you inject some dispersive viscoelastic, you can create a bit of a barrier there. And so here we go, trying to get these pieces up. You don't want to have too much manipulation because you don't want that hole in the capsule to become even larger. And then watch carefully as you perform this to ensure that no pieces are falling back into the vitreous cavity. And if they do, you need to get those out. So now you can see the posterior capsule is certainly open there. Again, you don't want to come out of the eye like this. I'd rather keep the eye inflated because you don't know what's the status of that anterior hyaluronic face. So there's viscoelastic. That's helpful. Now by manual uh, vitrectomy cutter going inside there, probably 23 gauge, cleaning up any prolapse vitreous. But again, remember, we can often prevent prolapse of vitreous if we're able to use viscoelastic to prevent the anterior segment from collapsing. If you let the AC pressure go to zero, well, the vitreous cavity pressure is higher than zero, so you're going to get vitreous prolapse. So cleaning that up there, but look, there's still a sizable amount of lens material that needs to come out of the eye. So here, a little visco dissection to get that lens material freed up. And then I agree, bring it up, get that lens material up out of the eye. So now it's cleaned up. Now time for some more IA material. Oh, the big air bubble in the IA in your infusion. So you want to run this infusion outside the eye temporarily, you know, for a few seconds to make sure there are no air bubbles in your line. So cleaning up all of that lens cortex. And again, don't let the eye collapse here. You may want to leave that infusion in until you can put the viscoelastic. Now time to attempt a posterior capsule rex if you can. That'll help prevent that capsule break in the posterior from extending even more. Sometimes it's hard to complete this. But if you can grab down there just with your capsule just forceps, just to create something continuous. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. As long as it's continuous, it likely won't run out as much. So trying to complete this, again, this is an optional phase. You could just put the eye well in the eye now. Here I'd like a three-piece lens with the haptics in the sulcus and the optic captured. Remember about cataractcoach.com. You know there's a free book about cataract surgery on that site. You know we have a curriculum series. Do you know we have an amazing podcast? And you better subscribe to the daily email. So here we go. Time for the lens. Let's get the lens in here. A little more viscoelastic. Foldable lens. Oh, going in the bag. Okay, now you can put the lens in the bag. So initially, I think being placed in the sulcus and then kind of getting those haptics in the bag. I would have liked a three-piece lens here, but certainly you can do this. If you do have that intact posterior capsular axis, you can put this lens completely within the capsular bag because remember, your posterior opening is not likely to run out more if you have a complete posterior curvilinear capsular axis. So now getting these haptics inside the bag. So now the whole lens in the bag, since you have an anterior capsular opening and a posterior capsular opening. So reasonable outcome here. And may want to put some triumphant to ensure no vitreous is around. And then let's clean up, take the viscoelastic out, seal up the incision, and call it a day. So definitely check out the Cataract Coach website too. Please do not email me asking questions that you could have simply used the search function for on cataractcoach.com, right? 
And if you're emailing me, asking me for like special advice, and you don't even subscribe to the email, the daily email, well, what does that tell me? Again, check out the website and definitely listen to that podcast. We give away all the secrets of ophthalmology that'll make your career even better.